we can take this further and consider other kinds of problems. So we can imagine a car moving along. And some speed. And ask how much time does it take for this car to cover a distance D? Our answers might span of Possible possible choices. Let's just look through them together. So we're looking for a time because we're asking how long would this process take? Answer one would be a length over a time. Multiply that time, so if I by a length, that would be a length squared over time. That's not correct. This would be one over that, so that would be a time over a length squared. Again, not correct. Answer C would be a length over a time, divided by D, a D, a length, so that'd be one over a time. That's close, but it has the inverse of what we want. Answer D appears to be correct. It's a length divided by a length over a time. So it just becomes a time. And here's a length squared over time squared divided by one length. It's a length over time squared. That looks more like an acceleration. And this is a length squared divided by a length over time. So that becomes a length over a time. A time to time, excuse me. So in fact, the only correct answer here is this one. And I will point out that actually this particular answer D has a particularly intuitive uh, sense to it. Because if you look about what is this delta time, time or this time interval, it intuitively should take less time for the car to cover a certain distance if the speed is quite larger. So that's a very reasonable thing. We know that we can get to Dallas more quickly if we're traveling at 100 miles an hour than 60 miles an hour. And if V gets larger and larger in this expression, then 1 over V gets smaller, and this time interval goes to 0 as this velocity speaking, V goes to infinity. So this is another technique besides dimensional analysis that scientists use very frequently, and that is to look at limiting cases, like the sense of what is the what are the extreme variations of this answer as I take one or other variable and either have it go to zero or have it go to an, uh, an infinitely large uh, case. And that's another way of checking whether or not your answer is correct on a problem. 